I'm, I mean, I'm a computer scientist now, but I started as a physicist and I studied physics because I wanted to become an astronomer. And uh, the good thing about computer science and about machine learning especially is that, as people say, you get to play in everybody's backyard. So we, you can work together with people from different fields and uh, we work with astronomers and space people. And it's, and it's clear that um, there are several respects in which uh, AI and machine learning is going to be crucial there. One is, of course, the amount of data in, in astronomy. So we have these sky surveys and it's clear that no, no person is ever going to look at all these images. So we need to gradually uh, uh, use more and more automatic methods to analyze scientific data. And uh, the second thing about space missions, of course, is that space missions, as soon as they involve a human, are extremely expensive because security is paramount. So if you can uh, replace humans by robots, and if you can replace them by robots on space missions that are that have a certain form of intelligence or flexibility to adapt to new situations, that's crucial because uh, you can't always remote control them. Uh, space missions are oft far, often far away. Uh, if the robot is in Mars, uh, you can't directly control them because even the light takes too long to go there. So uh, there's a special role for AI in this kind of exploration. And I think it will become more and more important as, as the AI capabilities will really get better. So as someone said the other day, Mars is now the, possibly the, the only planet uh, uh, that's completely colonized by robots. So the only, the only uh, life on Mars are robots. And uh, the, the difficulties are whenever something unexpected happens, uh, how to deal with that because our current AI technology uh, we train the systems, we use machine learning, AI is almost identical to machine learning now, so we train them on certain situations that we generate beforehand. Uh, and uh, these methods, they work as long as the future looks the same as the past. But if something very surprising happens, then standard AI methods uh, probably usually cannot generalize. So we need to find AI methods that uh, are more robust and uh, generalized to new situations. And that's, of course, closer to the intelligence capabilities of humans and animals. So we have to develop the next generation of AI. I think it has to do something with uh, models that understand causality and not just correlations. And I think those will also be helpful in, in facing these difficulties as we apply AI in, in, in space applications. I mean, uh, if we look at uh, the last 10 or 20 years, developments have been relatively fast uh, and the field has grown a lot. Many young, young, talented people are going into AI, so we have a lot of talent, a lot of brain power thinking about these problems. So I don't expect that we will uh, create human-like intelligence any anytime in the near future, but I expect that we will be able to generate more versatile forms of intelligence uh, and, and uh, a better understanding of what's going on. Yeah.